Hey, welcome to another episode of Merchant Center Mastery. Today we're going to be talking attribute rules. These used to be called feed rules in Google Merchant Center Classic. Now they are called attribute rules in Next. So this is going to be one of two, maybe three or so videos I'm going to do on attribute rules. I decided to break them up into more of like a beginner video and more complex videos because attribute rules are kind of as simple or complex as you want to make them. And so in this first intro, uh, introduction beginner, we're just going to go through the basics of setting up an attribute rule and, and just like a simple one. We'll walk you through that. So the first thing to realize is that attribute rules are in your data source. And, and again, let me just once again say attribute rules used to be called feed rules. Remember, it's a quick reminder, Google Merch Center has just kind of is trying to delete the word feed from everywhere that it can. That's really funny because now there's the feed label. That's going to go away at some point. It's going to say source label, right? Um, so... Uh, as also as a very quick reminder, in order to actually uh, turn on attribute rules, if you go in and you've never done any sort of attribute rule, you actually have to turn that on, and it's going to be in add-ons. It's super quick, so I can show you. And then, and then you're going to see this here. I've already have it turned on in this one. It's called Advanced Data Source Management, and you're going to go ahead and turn that on. That'll be in your Discover tab if you've never turned that on. Once you turn on Advanced Data Source Management, then it will actually show you that's also how you turn on supplemental sources. We did a video on that, um, used to be supplemental feeds. And then that's how you do your attribute rules. Now your attribute rules are assigned per, <laughs> I want to keep saying feed, per data source. So let's say I had like three different data sources here. Your attribute rules for those will only be assigned to that specific source. So what you have to do is you have to click onto that source and that's when your attribute rules are visible. So we're gonna go ahead and click into that. Now the basics of attribute rules are they are they are simplistic rules. They are you're not supposed to define things by the by the word, right? But they're they're these they're these simplistic entities for making changes to making edits to the uh, data within your feed or your data source. Um, the thing with attribute rules, I've talked about this before, I'm not a huge fan of using them unless it's absolutely necessary, it's an emergency, it's very quick. One of the reasons being by the time you change things in supplemental sources and attribute rules and individual product edits and you change it in your core source thing and Google's finding things on your website and changing things then, you have like five or six different ways that your feed, your product information can be edited. And if you ever have issues with that, like you see something in the title you need to change, you can really get into trouble just trying to track down where that is. So I like keeping things as much as possible pushed to my main primary source so I can keep that as clean as possible. One of the things with attribute rules though, is it can be a very easy way of immediately implementing something. This can be very helpful, let's say in like product suspensions. Um, you know, there are, there are different things for it. One of the ways we like to use attribute rules is for creating promotion IDs or even custom labels. So uh, let's let's walk through kind of like how to set up an attribute rule. Uh, this will be more of a simplistic one. So as I've said, I think I said this in my supplemental source video, if you have more complex things you want to change, either change it in your product source, your main product source, or just use a supplemental source. I'm a big fan of those because you can easily see what data you're changing. Now, if you have an edit uh, where there's a fairly easy to follow rule, and we'll talk about that, then that can be where an attribute rule comes in. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is there's kind of always this like default rule that's an attribute rule that you're going to see in there. And this is like you're telling Google Merchant Center next how to pull your data. And so you'll see this near, especially if you have like supplemental sources. But what you're telling Google here is, hey, pull from you know, pull from the supplemental source three. If that attribute has no value, then pull from custom labels or supplemental source. And then if that pull from product source two, right? Um, if you don't have any supplemental sources, this will just, you know, have pull from the, the, um, the core source, which is this product source two is, um, yeah. See, we're in Remember, remember we clicked through that data source. Oh, Google killed me with that back button. 
So this is our core source in this account, if you will, it's a Google Sheet. This is called Product Source 2. I should rename that for simplicity on these videos. Um, but so this is saying, hey, go first to the Supplemental Source 3 supplement, sub Supplemental Source, Supplemental Feed. It gets complex, right? Uh, go first here if, um, and then go here and then finally go here. So this, so this is in terms of priority, this is, this is going to be your most recent, this is going to be your most recent source. And you can change these by the way. So you can, you can move those around so that whatever you want as your top level, that that's going to be the final one that Google pulls from to edit that. So let's say these were all editing. Let's say all of these are sending a different value for custom label three. Let's say this is custom label three, this is custom label three, this is custom label three. At the end of the day, when this when the final thing gets pushed, it's gonna be this. It's gonna be whatever whatever this one is, because that's the that's the most recent in this rule. Um, and we we talked about that briefly, but with supplemental sources, what you could do is remove it from here. And then and then um and you can see this when you save it as a draft. Now now it's gonna say, hey, no longer look at supplemental source three. So if I did that, we could leave supplemental source three in there. Um, we, whoops, I did the wrong thing. Sorry, I did an update instead of apply. So we could leave, oh, I, I updated the feed, right? Um, so now if we go to supplemental source, check this out. So supplemental source three, once, once this fully processes, it usually takes a couple minutes. But once it processes, um, this is gonna say none right here as well because we just removed it from that attribute rule. But that's really important. Like I said, it takes a couple minutes, but that's really important to understand. Um, j just like that attribute rule is always there. That's always there. Um, so <clears throat> let's get into some other attribute rule stuff. So, so let's say, let's say we want to, um, Let's say that we want to take all products. It's, this is going to be a little tricky in mind because I only have one product. Um, but we can still, you know, we can still give you, we can still give you some, um, some, you know, information and options. So um, there's there's a couple things. Like let's say I'm trying to think of a good example of when you know a client will come to us that will actually use an attribute rule. A lot of times it, it is like a promotion. Let's say so. Um, let's say a client is like, hey. Um, all of the product type, all of the product type for um, Lego Star Wars are going to be on sale for 20%, 20% uh, off, right? So here's where we might just quick hop in there. And again, I understand actually, you know, we talked about this within the promotional, within the promotions, there's a way to actually do that where you just target the, the you, you actually target um, a specific product type for promotion. Pretend that doesn't exist, okay? Um, so we are going to go into attribute rules. We're going to go and what, what, so this is at an attribute rule. This is for the rule. Sorry. This is for the attribute that you want to actually edit. Um, so that's what you're doing here. You're doing the attribute that you want to edit. Uh, so let's say, um, we said promotion ID. There it is down there. You can find it. So now we're going to hop in here to promotion ID. Now we're editing the promotion ID. Now, Select when to replace attribute data. Um, if we don't have anything here, then it's just always applied. And like, that's what you do for, let's say if you're setting up a rule for that supplemental source to utilize the supplemental source. We want to only replace attribute data. Remember we said when product type equals Lego Star Wars. So we only want to do, um, we only want to edit the data when it matches this product type. Now, here's where you can um, you can just add in a value. You can you can you can pull like certain things um, to say contains X Y Z. You can do that with a dynamic thing. In this instance, like we don't want to do that. We just want to say like let's say our product type is Lego Star Wars. Let's say that's what it is. Although it, it'd probably be like toys and games and then um, building blocks and bricks how about that and then lego building bricks and then lego star wars it kills me not capitalizing lego but um there's no cases in uh 
in product type. So let's say that was our product type. So we're like, hey, hey Google, now only only change the promotion ID attribute when it matches the product type of this. All right. So that's one. Um, by the way, if if you're like, well, also we have a twenty percent sale on product type. You you can you can do that as well. That's the or attribute. Um, the and attribute forces it to to be both of these conditions, right? And, and I mean, this is pretty common conditional stuff. It's conditional logic, right? Um, so like if you were like, hey, oh, here's a good example. Um, let's say we also had the brand. Let's say, uh, let's say that for the sake of argument, let's say that this company sold both Legos and like cheap knockoff Legos. Back in the day, I, I bought a couple of sets that were Lepin, 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 Lepin Star Wars. Uh, there was like this China knockoff. I confess I bought two sets and I haven't bought any since. They were kind of crappy. Um, but I was like, I can have the Star Destroyer instead of like $800. I can have it for $120. Sure. Why don't I try that? Um, so anyways, let's say like you have that. And so you also want to say, Hey, I don't want to give Lapin blocks, um, the sale. I just want Lego. So then, then you'll do brand and then you might, you know, again, you could, you could find that value since we don't have that. We're just going to say brand. Um, oops, I'm sorry. This would be Lego matches Lego. So, um, maybe we'd even say equal. So, so in this way, what we're saying is, Hey, take the promotion ID, only apply it to building blocks that meet this product type, Lego Star Wars. And by the way, only apply it to, whoops, that didn't work. Only apply it when the brand also matches Lego. So it has to meet both of these. Or, and that's where you can throw in another attribute, right? So it would be this, these conditions or another condition. Um, so, so right now we're applying that. And now here's where, and again, this is going to be the intro. So this is just the simplistic one. This is the most of the time you're going to do this. You're going to say set to, um, and you're just going to add in the promotion ID. So here's where, here's just the value because we're editing the promotion ID. So here's where we might say BFCM 20% because I said it, I said it was a 20, well, we'll do 2024. So maybe this is their Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. And you're prepping this, you're getting everything ready. So now, so we're going to say, okay, so, um, and then we're done. So what you, so, so basically like what you've done is you have gone in, you've created this for the promotion ID. You've said, I only want it to apply to Lego star Wars that meet also meet the brand Lego. And once it does, once you find an ID that meets those conditions, now set the promotion ID to black Friday, cyber Monday, 2024. So that's, that's how it works. If it has no value, then by the way, if it has no value, then that's where it's going to go through those other, um, uh, the other supplemental source and then all that, right. Then, it, then it follows that conditional logic. So, um, so that's the basic and, and you can, you can show the preview, which is kind of good. I'm not going to do that in my case. Cause like, I'm not going to have anything matching. Um, and then you can even, you can save it, make sure that it looks good before applying. You can, you can test the rules. Um, in fact, we'll run that test real quick. It's going to be like, hey, this didn't work. Uh, and then once you're ready, th this test may take between, I've never seen that before. This test may take between 10 and 20 minutes. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, anyways, it w it's especially funny when I have like one product, like, geez, how long is it going to take? Uh, so anyways, so then you would apply these changes and then you would be able to see that when those conditions are met, that is your uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday um, uh, attribute rule. And then if you're running this promotion, then you go in once that's set and you create the promotion. So that's how you utilize, uh, that's one example of um, an attribute rule. Uh, we'll, we'll go over some like more of the more complex um, yeah, formats and th stuff like that with the attribute rules, but that's, that's probably the most common that you're going to do in a pinch, um, of, of that sort of thing, like promotion ID, something like that. Uh, just, you know, just to, again, just to give you an example, another one that we might do will be like changing up, um, changing up prices or like, let's say titles. Um, so, uh, just, uh, again, just as a quick example, we might decide, Hey, we really want to test 
putting um, you know a specific text in front of this. So let's say we have our Lego Star Wars uh, products, and we want to actually put Lego Star Wars. We want to we want to prepend that to the title. Um, you can do that. That's a little bit more complex, and maybe that's part of the stuff that we'll talk about with like adding modifications and stuff in another time. But hopefully this gives you a very basic conditional logic of how to actually create attribute rules. Hope that's helpful. As always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. So thank you much.